Yeah, uh, five o'clock on a, on a Monday. I'm Jay Fidel. This is no surprise think tech and it's community matters here today with uh, Senator Sharon Moriwaki. We're talking about a retrospective of the 2021 session. Very interesting session. Hi, Sharon. Thank you for joining Hi, us today. Hello, Jay. Nice to see you. Nice to be on uh, <laughs> and, and being on your program again. Thank yeah, you. so it's Hi, great you. to have you. <laughs> so um, let's talk about the session. Uh, first, in sort of a general sense, how, are, how would you characterize this session uh, as opposed to other sessions? You know, they say that last session was not this past one, but the one before when COVID hit us was the worst and, and you know, it was a really different session. Uh, this session was not any better. <laughs> we are still not out of COVID. Uh, we, we cut short our, our, uh, our session. Uh, we we uh, ended in April. Uh, we have not ever, uh, as I've been told, had 28 vetoes of our bills. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. quite a bit. And so uh, we learned a whole lot this session, not only in terms of the number of bills and trying to work remotely and getting as much in as possible, but having a real, real run at the end on um, the uh, conference committees, we were running around trying to get bills saved and bills together and we missed on 28 of them. Uh, and we had to come back in special session uh, because, uh, well, it wasn't really our fault. It was uh, a number of bills had to do with the budget and with uh, the uh, um, debt service and all of those couldn't be paid with uh, the federal relief funds. So we did have to come back to fix that. So in override, you override and that's it. it the overridden bill becomes law. And you also have the opportunity to look at all the bills to say, can we fix it? If you can fix it, you can come back. And if the governor agrees, the two houses agree, the governor agrees, then you can actually fix a bill and it can go on its merry way to be passed and signed. Uh, so we had a couple of those. Uh, we could not get agreement on a couple hour, others, and and I hope um, next session we could we could work on those bills again. So, you know, is it so is next session the second of a biennium? Yes. So a lot of a lot of uh, what you know what didn't get it's done still this carrying year. Over. Yeah, it'll be yeah. carried over. Yeah, I, I want to ask you at the end of the show what you know what's cooking there. I mean, what what is likely to come up next year on that basis? So uh, government operations, uh, uh, that's a really special committee. Uh, we don't hear too much about it, but you're the chair. And, uh, you know, given the kind of energy, excuse the term, uh, that you that you have, I, I imagine there's been some interesting legislation out of that committee. Can you talk about it? Sure. Um, you know, you, you would think that government operations, it's, it's really kind of an in the weeds committee. You know, we look at how can government be more efficient? How can we uh, make sure that our programs are structured or uh, we, we evaluate them, we do procurement. Uh, I oversee the Department of Accounting and General Services. So there's a lot that's in that department that's, that's in what they call my purview under the Senate rules. So um, I thought it would be, um, you know, kind of straightforward committee. Um, and I had over a hundred bills that came to my committee. It was craziness. And we had to, we, and we, we, as I said, we had a curtailed session. So it was how can we push as many bills through as possible uh, that were good bills uh, that we would be able to improve uh, the services of government. Uh, there were reorganization bills. There were bills um, to, um, to have the state be more, um, how should I say, more efficient, uh, save us money, uh, as well as provide more services for what we have. So for example, um, uh, we have several million dollars that we spend on, uh, on lease space, all of that. And, and so we toured some of the, the, the office buildings. And we found that, that a lot of space was not housing people, it was housing people's junk, you know? It was a lot of uh, things that should be going to archive or being shredded 
or lots of PPE all over the place on floors that were very nice office spaces, you know? So, so part of um, looking at that and how can we do it, we talked to the comptroller and he said, you know, it's up to each department. We can't tell the department what to do. Um, so, you know, there it goes. We said, well, what would make it more effective so that you do assess how much space they do need and then give them the space they need and add more people in and bring them out of uh, least private space and save that money for other purposes. He says, well, we don't have the authority to do it. So one of the bills we passed and was signed gives the comptroller the authority to go in and look at space. I know a number of you state employees might not be so happy, uh, but this is all for the good of the public and sure. being much more um, thoughtful and mindful about the space we do have and use it for the benefit of the public. So that is one thing that the, the comptroller is now assessing the space uh, from the Ways and Means Committee. We have gone to Kauai and, and the Big Island. And one of the um, themes is looking at how well they use their space. <laughs> <laughs> somebody somebody has to do that. Yeah. Somebody, somebody has, has to, to do, do it. That. You know, I'm taking it for the team. <laughs> right on, right on. Well, that's good. That's you know, that's like dealing with uh, you know, special funds that are hidden in the corners and nobody ever sees them and somebody's got to, you know, <laughs> take a look. <laughs> One of the things we did do though, you know, near and dear to me is 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 renewable energy and, and electric vehicles. Um that the state is a big user of vehicles, both uh, when our employees go to the neighbor islands or go elsewhere and rent cars, or uh, when we buy vehicles for our motor pool. So the bill that passed, uh, and already the comptroller is working on this, is that uh, we, uh, when there is, um, uh, when, when our employees go to the neighbor islands, if available, and with, you know, again, comparables in terms of cost, uh, they can't go renting, you know, a Tesla or something, you know, it really has to be functional <laughs> and can get them from point A to B and back. Uh, they, they, we have a preference for ele using electric vehicles and the Comtro is already starting to purchase electric vehicles when um, he's, he's uh, replacing vehicles that we, we now have. So we, we are uh, really being a model for the state in using um, electric vehicles. That's great, Sharon. It's not, it's not just that, um, you know, um, state agencies, uh, you know, can be more efficient and, um, and be a model to, you know, a model in general, you know, internally and externally. It's that it's a nod, you know, it's a nod. It's saying the state, uh, the legislature, the governor, they want to focus on electric vehicles. We really mean it. We're committed. You know, you can count on us maintaining this policy. So it's time for you to go out and get an electric vehicle. That's that's a fab fabulous message. And and you, the other thing is that we create the market. So once we create the market, more cars will come in that are electric, and 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 then you actually have more vehicles available. Uh, for others uh, to purchase. Uh, right now, we don't have it. I think California is taking all these electric vehicles. I, I was trying to buy a Kia and, I, and the one that I wanted wasn't coming in because they were all going to California. Uh, and so, so what, if the state becomes the, the driver, so to speak, the driver of bringing in more electric vehicles, there will be more uh, of a market created for others to then purchase, hopefully at a lower price, uh, these new electric vehicles. I think, I think that's clearly a, a terrific bill. One of the things I think you guys did was um, streamline the computer system for the state. What did you do in, in that regard? Okay, so under, under my purview also is um, the Office of uh, enterprise services, and they are in charge of all the computers, the large computers for the state. Uh, part of the problem there is that, as we saw in the unemployment insurance uh, program, 
these are legacy systems. They're huge legacy systems. They have to comply with the federal regulations, but it's also having a more nimble system, having something that's really updated uh, had not been done. And so um, the Office of Enterprise Services uh, was working with these, these programs. Now I talked to the programs and they said, well, you know, we've got to send it up to, to, to um, the office and the office will look at it. And there's a three or four person committee. They will look at it and we are scheduled to meet, I don't know, in the next monthly meeting. I said, well, that's crazy. You've got a problem on your hands today. What are they doing today? And why do you have to wait a month or when their next scheduled meeting is? There should be something that's closer in time to when you need to be working on the project. So I talked to um, Doug Murdoch, the, 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 um, the director, and said, why, why do you have to have that? Why can't you have an ongoing open door for de departments to work with you and not not at the tail end, but at the front end. You know, when you're developing the program, you, you talk to whoever has to use the program and, and try to streamline it at that end and then put your computer system together and help them get the contractor, help them execute. So you don't leave them stranded at the tail end. Um, you also make sure that it's implemented. And I call it the cradle to grave on, on, on what we do in state government. A lot of times it's so fragmented and siloed, one doesn't know what the next does. And so we have wasted money and programs that don't always work to the user's benefit. So, so we have a mod, we put money in and staffing in uh, to, to Doug's program. Um, to do um, a modernization program within their department to do just that. So we're working with him. I wanna see a plan on how he's gonna use the funds we gave him so that we really can help the departments. Again, the departments become more efficient. They serve the public much better because they now have all the tools before them. So that's- Yeah, well, we, we know at ThinkTech how, you know, having a decent computer system Database system yes, these days, yes. communication system can make life so much easier, so oh, yeah. much more efficient. Yeah, it's the tools that everybody needs. And, you know, we can't have it so archaic that, you know, it breaks down and you don't know how to fix it. So the other thing we're working on, and I was just going to talk to Doug about it because uh, Senator Dela Cruz is very interested in growing our own um, talent and workforce. And what are the training and competencies we need? So instead of working off a consultant that we pay millions to, uh, why not train our own people so that we've got in-house talent and we can pull in from the high schools, from the community colleges, from wherever, and bring them in as an intern so they know the system and hire them on as, as, as they perform. And, and I... I think a lot of what we're, we're facing are, uh, how should I say this nicely? Um, <laughs> we've, got, we've got managers or administrators saying, no, I want somebody who knows how to do the job when we hire them. Well, if you want somebody who know the job when you hire them, then you better be, be able to pay the big bucks, you know? If you want to have somebody who's gonna stick around, know your system, be able to, to learn and grow with your department or with your division, then why not show a young person, and they're very talented now if you're talking about IT, to come in, learn, your, learn everybody's job and see how you can make that job easier and work on a computer system and be there, train them, train them up, train them constantly. Because as you know, Jay, IT changes day by day and you can't say, okay, we're gonna wait. Um, and uh, you know, when we get the next funding and I don't know when, uh, we'll upgrade the system. It's a daily thing to be looking around and seeing how can we improve? And that's the mindset that young people have that we, don't <laughs> sometimes yeah, well, we, we have to keep them here you gotta keep, and keep current keep with the times keep we have to build a um a, a generation of of i, I don't want to say kids but young people 
who are Akamai Baptists yes. so that we can do it here ourselves. We don't have to bring them in from the mainland all the time and send away our kids. Yeah. So it's great to build local competency in this and so many other things. This is, this uh, is what we're really trying to develop, Jay, is at least from the Senate, is how can we develop our local kids so they don't have to go away to get a decent job with enough pay so they can buy a home or at least a condo and live here. You know, this reflects um, a, a phenomenon that I have observed, and that is um, COVID, COVID has you know, threatened us, COVID has mm, disrupted us, COVID has made us think maybe a little more out of the box and has changed us. Uh, it has changed our, our state, our society, our people, our businesses for sure. And this, I think it has changed the way the legislature looks at things. Uh, and what you are talking about is an example of that. Am I right? Is that is that what's in the air? That was that in the air during this session? Yeah, you know, and and we've been talking about this for a while. It's just it it became much more prominent because we saw a, a, our stable industry um, without a workforce. Uh, it really almost crumbled. And how did we? How could we save it? and also seeing that we had to look at, at diversifying our economy. I mean, we've talked about it for years. I mean, you know, we've always talked about diversifying the economy, but it was so stark when we saw the empty beaches, the empty hotels, the empty restaurants, that we are depending too much on an industry. Um, and, not, and, and it's not that we don't want to support the visitor industry because it is our staple, but we weren't we weren't expanding into other areas. We're just talking today um, with um, uh, Jerry Gibson and uh, Senator Dela Cruz talking about why don't our local kids get up into the management stream in hotels? If they did, then we would be much closer to the hotels and see how we could support the hotels because the hotels are us and we are them. Um, and it hasn't been so visible. Um, the other, the other um, part of this is why don't, didn't the hotels, or, or some of them are, um, connecting with the community. So for example, if we wanted to build agritourism, we've got all these beautiful um, um, uh, um, decorative plants, we've got, we've got, um, all kinds of new plants and new um, species that we're developing at CTAR. Uh, why not just instead of as this is Senator, this is Senator Dela Cruz's point. So why is it that we just have the Mary Monarch and the Pacific Festival? Why not have people come here as really a truly destination for, for seeing what the new species are, you know, in, in plants and and in um, vegetables and fruits and 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 that would be the draw and and the hotels would be a part of it so we said why isn't the hotels buying all of these products that that are locally grown Good question you know yeah. we do farm to state farm to school why not farm to hotel and and really start looking at the connections of the industry the visitor industry growing other industries that would really be the feeders for the hotels and vice versa. Yeah, I know he's been interested in local agriculture for a long time. Uh, we did a show years ago about uh, one of his projects. And, and uh, this, you know, as I say, this is a time when we've been disrupted by COVID. This is the time to take a hard look at uh, the sectors of the economy. And uh, one of them is agriculture for sure. I think tech is making a movie, a documentary about uh, agriculture in Hawaii. This is the time to look at it. So I'm so glad you guys are looking at that and trying to uh, incentivize, um, you know, the hotels and and at the same time offer a career. Offer it's just like it's just like the computer, the IT thing. Offer careers to young people where they can visualize, even from a young age, they can visualize uh, spending their time uh, in a farm in a high level agricultural experience. This is great to offer them an alternative sector to, 
to yeah, invest and, themselves and it into. So, it could be so exciting because you know their grandparents say, "Oh no, you don't want to go into egg farming. Is hard work. You got to hoe and you got to you know get up early and and so forth." But with the technology and how we're looking at different different um, jobs, that is in a whole stream of agribusiness, right? Whether it's you know you, you really need to to adjust to okay new seeds or or then you look at not only um, farming but the farmer may just want to farm but what is the network that from from the farm and the harvest then you have to go to to the um processing and then to the distribution marketing all of that is business acumen that we need to train our kids it's not just the farming it's a whole complex of 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 competencies that are needed and you don't have to do one part of it you could have a team doing a whole the whole and one of the exciting things is is um we went to Kauai and kilohana um um which is gaylords and and was a small little restaurant before it's a nice restaurant now it's a whole complex he's he added on i think 60 acres it's about 80 90 acres and, and he's got all kinds of orchards and vegetables and everything is growing there that he can use in his, in his um, um, restaurant. And then he's got little, little huts that you can have drinks and he's brought in, uh, you know, a, 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 a trolley that goes around the place and it's become a visitor, you know, a destination point. So, so there's so much that you could do to make it tourism, but also he's gotten plots that he gives to the local farmers, they can farm and that becomes their produce that they could sell. And the other exciting thing is if you could get um, a hub that does value added to the product. So you could have one example that, that, um, that Senator Dela Cruz was talking about when they went to Oregon, I think, um, was that the, 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 the farmer had all these chestnuts and, and it was, and, and it, they were all going to be thrown out. So he went to the, the, their CTAR and said, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna have to throw this out. I'm gonna lose my whole crop. And, and they said, well, no, you could do value added. They made chestnut butter, chestnut jam, and so on and so forth. And now the guy is like growing a lot of chestnuts <laughs> because yeah. now there's a value added industry that it's comes from creativity. It's creativity. Yeah. Isn't you it know? exciting? I think that's wonderful. Well, one, of my, one of my wife's uh, relatives who left uh, Hawaii decades ago uh, came back recently and started a coffee, a coffee farm in Kealakokua. Oh, and, wow. uh, and she is having a whale of a time. And get family and a whole a whole group of people up there working on this and and you know I take it farming farming Sharon you can quote me on this farming is fun farming is fun okay farming <laughs> you have to tell the kids that <laughs> <laughs> it's going it's going somewhere well you know all of that all of that is good uh, but we we would be remiss uh, if we didn't talk about uh, in terms of this diversification issue. Uh, about the bill um, that that re reduced the amount of state support to the Hawaii Tourism Authority. Can you talk about that for a minute? Sure. Um, that's HB 862, um, the HTA bill. Um, there's a lot of things in that bill, but the one that people most concerned about was the reduction of, um, or HTA support. There was no reduction in HTA support. I think we all support the visitor industry. What we did do was change the, what they call the, the method of funding. And up to, to this year, they've been uh, getting special funded. That means it's a separate pot of money and, and you can use it and it's not in the general fund. So we can't touch it you can use it uh, for the purposes for which they were created and it was created to to support the visitor industry so originally when it was funded 
um, it was for that purpose. We found that you know we needed to support the, the visitor industry big time. So that's what it was done, I don't know, 20 years ago, whenever it was. And, um, and we also gave them a special fund because we know how slow the procurement process is in the state and they needed to work quickly to, to get programs out. So that was the concept behind funding the HTA. But the HTA's purpose at that time, uh, when it first got created, was to put a head on every bed. And, and they did that so well. We had 10 million people coming to our shores. Um, and we were, uh, we were generating income from it. Fast forward to, to today, and more so what we saw during the pandemic, is that, hey, you know what? we've got to be a little bit more mindful about what we're calling the visitor industry. It has to be a destination management um, program, not just head on every bed and, you know, not, and everything is just overrun and we haven't put enough money into the infrastructure. So, so our beaches are overrun, you know, our, our roads and, you know, as you can see in Hana, they're all over the place touching the, <laughs> our, our seals, whatever, right? Oh, right, it's yeah, not, right. Yeah. Totally <laughs> run over. Um, and, and that, I think from the legislature's viewpoint, was not, was not their job. Their job, their mission was to make this a quality destination, to make make it so that our, our industry was really um, uh, not only providing a good experience for the visitor, but also uh, taking care of our environment, taking care of our culture, our history, and making the visitor understand that and working closely uh, with our community, with our residents, so they didn't overrun uh, your neighborhoods with um, all these short-term rentals or you know, all these people wanting to see what's happening in your neighborhood uh, and not really respecting that we live here. You're totally right about that. You're totally right, yeah. So that, that's, that's what happened this year with the bill. And it really did, it, it gave them $60 million. I've heard that they had 20 million in their account. So 20 million in their account plus the 60 million is the 80 million they've been receiving. The big change is that they will have it funded by general funds, not by special funds. And the purpose is to rein them in to say, okay, you're saying you're doing all these things. Come like any other state agency and tell us what you're doing with your money or the taxpayer's money. And, and tell us how are you managing our, our uh, industry so that it really does meet the needs of the of, of bringing in quality, quality tourists who, who respect the place we live. So wow, that, that's great. You know, that's why we did what we did. And we're saying we're not, it's not forever. If they can show us, like they're starting to do now, finally pivoting. Um, and I see them going to the neighbor islands, working on the short term rentals and how you rein that in, how you control that. Now, that is one of the biggest problems we have because people come here on the cheap. They, they then you know, get every single car they can find, go all over the islands and, and not respecting you know, our, our culture and our people. So um, that is a, the charge to the HTA. If the HTA can do that, uh, they now have 80 million in their account, 20 million carry over and, and another 60 million, which we gave them. This, this is general funds. Like any other agency, tell us what you're using taxpayer monies for and is it managing our tourist uh, that, that got vetoed, but you guys overrode it. Huh? That's why we overrode it, correct. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I, I represent Waikiki. I represent Kaka'ako, many of whom are, um, are rely on the visitors coming in. And so, you know, it, it, it was a very hard decision for me, but it's because I think it's not, it's, it's, it's really for the purpose of reining in an agency and saying, hey, remember your mission. Your mission is just not, you know, just bringing the tourists in and just letting them go all over the place. 
Your job is to make this a quality destination where people can come and enjoy and we can enjoy them as well. Mm. So that's- I think it's a great, a great step forward conceptually uh, you know, and historically. Uh, Karen, in the remaining time, let me ask you uh, about you know, a couple of things that do um, directly affect um, you know, your constituency and um, your district. Um, one of them would be homelessness and the other would be crime. Can you talk about that? Sure. You know, um, they're both very much a problem. We have tried to um, uh, introduce bills on crime. Um, we did get one passed. It was for the elderly, it was upping um, the, the penalties for anyone who attacks uh, either physically uh, uh, or in their homes, as we've seen, they're so vulnerable. Uh, it's increased from, you know, to a felony. We also um, included people who financially abuse the elderly. So, so that's one crime bill that passed. Others um, where we wanted to, to have what, what the prosecutor is now doing is based on that weed and seed model is if you've committed, because some of these people are committing crimes like 20 or 30, it's a revolving door. So part of it was, okay, if you commit three, then you know it bumps you up and you can't come into the area. It, 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 and especially in Waikiki, because you know we have a lot of tourists, so it's easy for them to prey on the tourist because they're not going to testify against you. Once they're gone, they're gone. So um, you know, looking into to that as well. Uh, what what we're also doing is um, I'm working with a small group um, to look at the whole homeless problem. And who are the homeless? The homeless aren't just this big mass of people who have no homes. It ranges from an offender who actually does commit crimes. And we are hearing now that some of these uh, offenders are not living on the streets. They go into these tents and they sell drugs to the, the homeless. They prey on the homeless. And, and so that group should actually be, be actually cited and charged and you know go to prison or some kind of treatment uh, if they're, they're um, on drugs or you know there's a diversion program. The others are mental, mental ill, um, substance abusers, those as well. Um, find, and, and we've been working with HPD and, and um, uh, Captain Lambert who ran the HONU, established the HONU. His point is we want to divert them. We don't want to fill the courtrooms with them. We want them to get to a better place. So a lot of this may be administrative, it may be procedural, but it could come up with bills. Uh, for example, a number of treatment agencies don't want to take in people because they're afraid that if somebody dies while they're in their, their, um, their um, center, that they'll be charged and they will, um, lose their license. So we need some kind of good Samaritan law mm, to yeah. help these people so that they will take in people. Because the big, so this is the thing, we, we met with some homeless who are now in a better place. And to a person, they said, well, two things. One, that, that they've, they connected with somebody who cared for them, that they trusted somebody. And that's what these outreach workers and, and the treatment programs are doing. And those should be funded. Those that really care about taking one person, putting them off the street. But the other thing they said was, we do have, no matter how bad we're in, this moment of clarity, a moment of clarity when we know that it would be better not being where we're sitting today. And whether it's in prison or whether it's in a treatment program or whether it's finally, I, I can't be here anymore. And that moment of clarity is 10 minutes, 10 minutes. So what we're looking at now is how can we change our systems and our programs so that we accommodate the 10 minute moment of clarity. And that's really tough because we've got to put our resources to those places where you can take a person, they can get assessed, they can get treated, they can move into permanent residency or treatment. That's the goal. Do anybody well, when you ran for office originally about three years ago, and, um, and, and, you know, when you conceived of how it would be as a state senator, 
I, don't, I doubt you realized how many different disciplines and issues you would have to cope with and address and solve uh, in, in that job. It's a, difficult, it's, really... it's a difficult job, you know. You think it's really easy. I thought campaigning was hard and the job would be easier, but it's just <laughs> as hard because you've got so many problems. <laughs> and, you know, you've got to make the connections. And <laughs> it's yeah. not oh, always It's that... like you're, you're, you, you are the in loco parentis for the whole community. You have to think <laughs> of everything. I try. <laughs> well, let me, uh, I wish we had more time and maybe we should do this again because I know there are a lot of other issues and things that have happened. And this has been a tough session. I mean, last session you were, you know, out of luck uh, because it was closed for so many weeks. Um, this session, it was like hybrid um, and, and curtailed and, you know, you, you, you know, you didn't have the full uh, the full geography of what to do of, of the of the time and effort and resource to do it. Um, next session, knock wood. I'm knocking wood as we speak. Uh, we'll be out of COVID. I'm knocking wood. Uh, you'll you'll have more opportunities, resources, time, uh, support, what have you. Um, tell me, next session, the second session of the biennium. What do you expect uh, for the session next year in 2022? Well, it's it, we're 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 hoping and we're planning for it to be open. And and now that we're learning that um, we can actually do remote as well as in person, that's going to be really important because we need to hear from the community. That is so important and critical to a lot of the bills that we have. Um, and so, uh, looking at next year, there are bills still, you know, in the hopper that we have to go back and fix. Um, you know, a couple of them, um, like the emergency powers, we, we just ran out of time and uh, there's there's ways that we could fix that bill, at least for the future, not not this 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 governor, um, but but really uh, addressing some of the problems there. There's um, a lot of the bills that that we have in there. HCDA is one we wanted to restructure that and we had a bill almost ready to go. Uh, and we we um, just didn't make it uh, in in the um, when we um, you ran out of time. Word. Yeah, ran out of time. Well, there was just a small little error, and we were trying to fix it, but we just could not do it uh, and get a, get everybody to agree on it um, when with the override. Looking at the override, so some of the override bills, they're still good bills. We'll come back to those. We're looking from from my my purview of uh, government operations, we're looking at improving procurement. We, I have a special committee that I'm chairing on uh, government accountability and it's focusing on procurement. We have a number of bills that will come out from the committee. Uh, we are now asking departments for a lot of information on how they do procurement. Um, last year, we passed a bill that requires the departments to, um, to to evaluate contractors and put it into a uh, perform past performance database. So when anybody contracts out, they can see the performance of these, these contractors, which is a good thing because it's also a way for um, contractors to say, hey, you know what? I better do this job well because it's going to be up there on that website if I, if I don't, you know? Uh, That's so a great we're idea. trying to clean, clean up how we do business. It's been sloppy. It's been sloppy and and um, it's about time because we are we don't have the funds. So so we really it's time to use our funds more wisely for the benefit of our public. It sounds like uh, my theory is correct. That is, we, we've had a disruption over the past 18 months um, and we have seen that we have to think out of the box and you do think out of the box. And uh, that'll that'll raise all the boats. That'll raise all the boats. In a funny way, we are remaking the state. You are remaking the state. Yeah, so, so. Just a really little. appreciate your efforts. I know how hard you work, Sharon. And, uh, <laughs> so but it's, you issues. know what? It's fun when you see a little progress. A little progress here. A little progress there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. nice to know that um, you're not just doing it for naught. <laughs> no, no. We yeah. appreciate it. Um, Senator Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii State Senate, thank you so much for joining us. I hope we can do this again and explore so many other issues in which you are involved. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Jay.